What's going on, everybody? This is Boxing Wave. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. Welcome back. Hope everyone's having a great weekend so far, especially if you're here in New York. You know, it's a big Puerto Rican weekend. Uh, today is the actual parade today. So everybody's outside celebrating. You know, we had a boxing event down in Madison Square Garden in the theater with Xander Zayas, uh, Bruce Carrington. So we're going to go over those two fights and then we're going to head over to Adrian Brown. It's going to be a short video. Um, but I have a lot more content to do. This is going to be a busy week. Most of this week I took off. Um, check out the Deontay Wilder video I did. If you haven't seen that, check it out. And um, let's get right into it. Bruce Carrington, he stops Brian De Gracia in the eighth round. Okay, and he is no longer a prospect. He's been one of my favorite prospects for the last few years. And, um, you know, I've been, you know, Brooklyn, Brooklyn has been, you know, the place from New York mainly where the best fighters has come out. You know, I mean, even back back in the back of the day, you got guys like, you know, Mike Tyson, obviously. Um, you got, you know, Shannon Briggs from Brownsville as well. Um, you know, Riddick Bowe from Brooklyn. You know, we had Zab Judah, who's one of my, also one of my favorite fighters ever. And, um, you know, yeah, recently, you know, you had Danny Jacobs, one of my, my good, 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 good guy right there. Shout out to Danny Jacobs. But now we got Bruce Carrington, you know, and he's from Brownsville. And he's definitely been making waves in a boxing scene for a minute. Now, he's at this point a contender. So he's pretty close to fighting for a title. And... um He's ranked in the WBC and the WBO, I think higher in the WBO. So he's getting pretty close to getting a title shot soon. And um, he's 27 years old. So even though he started late as a pro, he's been boxing for a really long time. So he's going to be one of those guys not taking too many fights. He's already 12 fights in, undefeated, no draws, eight knockouts. And he's getting pretty close to fight for a title. And I think it's time because I don't really believe... He's going to stay at 126 for too long. You know, I don't know how long he's going to stay there. But um, he's still currently fighting at featherweight. Recently, he's been calling out Nyoya in a way. You know, in a way, is supposed to be coming up at some point from 122. And he's been calling him out respectfully. Nyoya in a way, was actually at the fight last night. And, you know, Karen shows mad respect. It's not like he's disrespecting him. He just wants to get his opportunity, as he should. You know, and in a way, did get a chance to see his fight before leaving the building. Um, so let's talk about the fight. He stops the Gracia in eight rounds. In eight rounds, I think this was a ten-round fight. Uh, he dropped the Gracia in the fifth. He dropped him again in the seventh, almost knocking him out of the ring, and he's finishing him off in the closing seconds of the eighth round. Referee stepped in and waved it all. Um, he looked good as normal. I mean, what I like about Bruce is he's giving you everything. You know, he's giving you the defense, but he's also trying to stop you. You know, he has the power. He has the athleticism. He has the speed. He has the reflexes. Um, good combinations, you know. He has it all. He has all the tools. Um, we just got to wait and see him perform at a higher level, you know. But he has all the tools. You got to really nitpick the fine flaws in this game. You know, when I was watching him last night, you know, I thought from the outside, I thought he could have did a little bit more, you know, especially with the jab. Um, I think he was kind of clearly look, like waiting for the, the opportunity to land a big shot. And I think uh, the defense could have been tightened up a little bit, especially when he was throwing the combinations. You know, I, it's, it's funny because he was late. He was waiting to counter. Um, the Gracia in between those punches because the Gracia was high volume. Okay, wasn't really landing much, but he's high volume. And Bruce was more in that mid range, close range, looking to counter, you know, with a hook and, and, and throw some flurries in between that. And he got caught a few times doing that. But again, I have to like nitpick. Like for the most part, he's sharp, he's on point, very compact. Um, you know, very doesn't really waste any punches like that. I seen him switch to Southpaw for a little bit. You can tell he's not as you know, he's not as naturally good as some fighter as a righty when he switched to Southpaw. He did it for more uh, for a moment. But overall, 
he's 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 pretty much giving you everything you want. You know, he's he can be explosive, he could be defensive, you know, he could fight on the back foot, he can he can pretty much do whatever. Um, you know, I think uh there was a point where DeGracia started to like move a lot and just avoid him and you know, Carrington had to like try to follow him and trap him. So I think he can definitely work on, you know, pretty much cutting off the ring. You know, we we saw that with Jerron Boots Ennis a couple of years back when he fought Corinne. Uh, I forgot the last name, but you guys know what fight I'm talking about where it went the distance where Boots couldn't really catch the guy. And it was a kind of like a boring fight. So I think if Bruce, you know, gets a little better at cutting off the ring for the opponents that he's going to have to walk down at some point. You know, just sharpen up a few. Like like I said, like, it's really not much there to really complain about. Just tighten up in a few areas. But he looks really, really good. Now, as far as him calling out in Inouye, I don't know how long Inouye is going to stay at 122. You know, but, you know, the the... The more he, the, the the longer in a way fights, people are gonna can start looking at holes. You know, like last fight he got dropped by Neri. Um, he ended up stopping Neri right after that. You know, and beating him up for the, the remaining rounds. But you know, Neri did drop him. You know, and we've seen Inoue hurt in the past and stuff. Uh, the more he moves up in weight, how long is his power still gonna be a factor? You know, one twenty six. It's a big gap in talent and size there. You know, I know it's just four pounds, but it's a big difference. And Carrington has been calling him out, which he should. The thing about Carrington is he has to also be concerned about the other champions at 126. You know, I mean, he's not even a, a champion yet. He has not fought anyone at that top level yet. So we still... There's still a lot to learn about him. And even though he's been, he's shown us his power, he's shown us what he can do, we still haven't really seen it at a top level yet. And there's no chump champions at 126. You know, even the guys that's recently lost, like Raymond Ford, he's going to move up. But even Raymond Ford had shown us a lot. You know, I think Raymond Ford has this, the most similar style. Out of all of the champions that are there, you know, I mean, he's a black American fighter as well. And um, Raymond Ford, um, even though he's a southpaw, he has the slickness to him. He has a dog in him. He's shown us that he can have some power, too. But he's going to move up to 130. But he lost to Nick Ball, who's just a straight dog. Um, you got Espinosa, who's huge at the way. I think he's like 6'2 or something like that, fighting at 126. We've seen his power. We've seen how he can box well. Then you also still got the Brandon Figueroa. It's another dog there, another high-volume puncher there. You got guys like Luis Alberto Lopez, who's the most awkward of those guys because of the angles he throws his punches from and the power he has and how explosive he is. So, again, it's it's still a tough row. I know he's calling out Inoue, who's one of the best fighters, top three in the world. But you still got the guys that's right there at 126 that are tough, that are champions. And then you got the guys that, you know, like Robesi Ramirez, who just recently lost. But he's still a top guy at 126. So I still want to see Carrington. I want to see him fight like a top tier, a top tier featherweight before even getting a title shot. And he might have to, you know, I don't know what Lee Wood is going to do. I don't know if he's sticking around on 126. Um, but, you know, I would like to see right now what I would like to see from Bruce is if he could get in the ring with somebody like a, a Ruben Villa, uh, uh, Angelo Leo. You know, I think someone that is fought for a title or fought like the top guys at the division if not a champion, I think those are the guys to go for right now. You know, if he's not going to get a title shot, that one next big fight before um, before the actual title fight is the way to go right now. You know, there's a few of them down here I could keep going. But I think that those names, you know, two things I want to see against with, with when it comes to um, Shushu. I want to see him fight 
a real legitimate pressure fighter, a durable one, you know, and I want to see how that works, like a real dog. And I also want to see him fight someone that's, you know, good counter puncher, got some slickness, some defense to them, doesn't really waste punches, someone that can challenge him to a chess match. So that's what I want to see from Bruce next uh, moving forward. All right, but good win, man. Um, very excited to see where he can go. Also, you got also you got to worry about the guys from 122 that's planning on moving up too. Um, so there's a lot of options out there for Bruce. So we just got to wait and see. All right, but good win, good win, dope um, knockout. Just want to see him at the top level at this point. All right, so let's move on to the next fight, man. Xander Zayas beats. Uh, Patrick Chisera, unanimously, Chisera is a former champion at 154. Okay, he beat Carlos Adamas some years back. And um, it's a good win. It's a good win. You know, Patrick hasn't had a good run lately. But for Zayas to beat a former champion, it definitely shows that he's pretty much entering that elite level where he's going to have to fight. One of the top, top tier, you know, maybe not champion, but one of the top tier 154 pounders soon. Now, 154, you you know, if you guys been here for a minute, you already know how I feel about 154. You know, 154 to me has consistently been the most dangerous uh, division in the sport because no one stays undefeated there. All right. No one really stays. The best fight, the best there. There are unit has been unifications there, uh, and a lot of fighters don't really get to defend their titles for long at this weight class without taking an L at some point. You know, from the Laras, you know, from the older guys like the Laras, you know, Canelo was down there at one point, um, Andre was down there at one point. You know, I, I don't have to run through all of the fighters. There's so many of them. I've, I've named them, Charlo. You know, all of these guys. They all took L's at some point, and Zayas, there's a lot of pressure for him because he's being viewed as the next great Puerto Rican fighter, or at least they want him to be. He's 21 years old, and he's doing very, very good up to this point, but there's a lot of pressure on him because they're comparing him to Miguel Cotto, Felix Tito, Trinidad, and I think he has the most potential to be that. He's very fundamentally sound. Um, he's not a flashy fighter. Um, he's well-rounded, fundamentally sound, very textbook style. Uh, but 154 is so deep, man, and, and people are already trying to get him against like Virgil Ortiz, which I get because Virgil Ortiz, which, as much as he's accomplished at 140, 147, and, and you know now he's fighting at 154, like Virgil Ortiz has fought way better fighters, and he's looked more of a, a like he's more of a KO artist. Whereas Zan Xander, he's not a KO artist. He's got some good stoppages, but he's not a KO artist. I wouldn't say that. I think Xander is a fighter that needs to be moved a little bit more slowly um, before jumping in and fighting the you know Virgil Ortizes of the world or any other top guys like an Erickson Lubin or. Uh, Tim Zhu or Sebastian Fundora or you know what I mean I just think that a, a good fight right now would be against like a Brandon Adams in my opinion you know I think that's that's the way to go the way to go right now um but I don't think he should just get moved up too quickly you know too quickly you got to be careful because I think that he's still learning to me you know and I know he has a name. I know he has a buzz. I know there's the whole Puerto Rico versus Mexico thing. But I think that with time, he'll continue developing. And especially when you're in a really difficult um, division like this. So I like a Brandon Adams. I like a Josh Kelly fight. Charles Conwell. Like Those are the fights that I like for him right now. You know, Magomed Kurbanov who just lost... Uh, to Madrimov, you know, those are the fights. Michelle Soro is still a good test. That That is a good fight, a very good fight, a realistic fight. That could be his very next fight. 
Virgil Ortiz, though, Virgil Ortiz has been a top contender for the last few years now. You know, even when he was at 147, I mean, he was damn near basically um, Terrence Crawford's Mando, you know, um, top tier, number one, number two ring guy at 147, where there's a bunch of dogs. So with that being said, um, I want to see Xander fight those kind of fights right now. You know, and um, see where he goes before we start getting into the top five and even top ten guys. You know, I think he should start picking up. He beat a former champion. That's cool. But Patrick, at this point, hasn't really been good for a minute. As far as his performance last night, again, very textbook. Out out boxing, out working to Sarah for the majority of the rounds. um, And facing off against the Southpaw. I believe they said as far as far as I didn't actually fact check that, but I believe they said on a broadcast that Patrick was his first southpaw. So I think it's a good win against a former champion. He did his thing. And um let's not jump the gun. You know, but he did his thing. He won a clear decision, you know, in New York. It wasn't like crazy knockout or anything like that. But you know what? That's not his style. And I think if they keep working him that way, he can beat him next Miguel Cotto. You know, I don't want to go crazy, but I think his chances are better. You know, as far as the Puerto Rican fighters right now, you know, the last fighter, obviously, that they try to push to be the next great Puerto Rican fighter was Felix uh, Verdejo. You know, phenomenal amateur. Um, and we know what happened with him outside of boxing. You know, he actually... Uh, murdered somebody so he's in prison right now but um he took a couple l's before that he took a couple l's before that and you know unfortunately for dejo just had the talent he has the boxing skills um but he just didn't have the dog in him he didn't have the durability in him he gassed late in fights so even though he was being pushed by top rank as well as being the next big puerto rican star it didn't work out that way, you know, and um, as far as guys like Sabriel Matias, Sabriel Matias to me right now is the best Puerto Rican fighter in boxing, um, but he's older. He's in his 30s already, you know, and um, I don't think he's going to be around that time that long. I think he's a guy that's probably going to get, you know, hopefully we get to see him unify soon at 140, um, but with his style and his age, um came around kind of late, got popular kind of late. And I just don't think that people are looking at him long term as being on a level of a Cotto or a, a, a Tito. <laughs> you know, that's that's crazy. That's a lot. Whereas Xander, 21, has a lot of time to continue developing. You know what I mean? I don't think he should be fighting uh, close to a title fight until he's at least 23, 24 years old. Just my personal opinion. All right. So, um, you know, I think that it's a lot of pressure for him, um, you know, but I think he has the most potential. You know, you, of course, you got Edgar Berlanga, but I think he's already proven that he has the name. He's probably the most known right now, but I don't think that he has the talent. Like, I think Xander has more talent to him because he's a lot more textbook, a lot more technical, better defensively, just an overall better talent to me. The Belenga, you know, once the Belenga knockout run ended and he had to really fight and, and win boxing matches, he didn't look all that great. So I think Zane Zayas has the most potential right now, but I also think he needs to develop more. And I don't think they should be jumping. Like I already seen um, Oscar De La Hoya already tweeted like, yo, I want to see him fight Virgil Ortiz Jr. Like, nah, chill. <laughs> Too soon. Like, let's let's calm down a little bit. All right, that's just my opinion. All right, and the last topic, Adrian Broner loses to Blair Cobbs, 10 rounds, unanimous decision, you know, and I thought it was pretty clear that Broner lost a fight, man. I saw a fight. Um, Now, I wasn't watching it. I just saw everybody tweeting about it, and I saw the knockdown in the second round. So, you know, I turned it on, and, you know, it is what it is. I, mean, I wasn't expecting Broner to win. Um, I didn't do no breakdown. It didn't feel like it was a need to. You know, Broner, he's not dedicated to sport. You know, he's just been collecting checks for a while now. So, 
it's hard for me to take him seriously. You know, I think like I've always said, you know, fighters like him, they're they're fighters that are less talented. That's going to be Adrian Broner because he's just not dedicated to the sport like that. You know, and I know like me, I was a huge AB fan at one point. You know, at one point he was like one of the best boxers or ta- uh, prospects in the world. You know, at one point he was. And when he won a, a title at 135, you know, people were already trying to squeeze him into that pound for pound status. Like it was really like that at one point. People were comparing him to be, the, you know, the next Floyd Mayweather and all that. Um, there's a number, you know, as much as a Broner fan as I was, I wasn't completely delusional about him. I thought that he had fights that could have gone either way. You know, he had a couple close ones where I don't, I didn't think, I think they just were debatable. And, you know, I'm not going to go through a long history of AB, but a guy like Blair Cobbs, who he's not really that active. Like he beat Maurice Hooker, who's a former champion at 140, which was very impressive. Like he did get stopped against Alexis Rocha at 147, but he did beat Maurice Hooker, which was a pretty good one. Um, but Blair Cobbs, just more dedicated, he stays fit. You know, he's not living a drama filled life. Um. He's just more responsible. He's more of a responsible boxer. And I think he has a decent amount of skills and athleticism and can outthrow a guy like Broner, who's always kind of been, um, just doesn't throw enough, doesn't let his hands go enough. I think that was the major issue with Adrian Broner since day one. And Broner just lacks dedication, man, lacks focus. He has too much stuff going on in his personal life on top of like the mental health issues, being somewhat suicidal and all that. Um, Listen, Broner's always going to sell a fight. You know, the whole thing, the presser that he had the other day where he was threatening Blair about having shooters and all that, that was to get people to pay attention last minute. Like, I'm not stupid. I know Blair, I know... I think I personally think Broner at this point is kind of corny and and he's going to say whatever he's going to say just to get people to buy into the fight. The problem is we're getting pay-per-views almost every weekend, but a lot of other platforms like The Zone and all the fights out in uh, Riyadh, those cards are giving us those quality cards, you know, and you still got top rank. You still got PBC. Before we pay for this fight, even though it's not as expensive, we're going to pay for the other fights, you know, and this card is not really like, it's not really that good of a card, you know, you got a bunch of dudes that are kind of either washed up, no disrespect, or they're not really that popular right now. So AB fighting Blair Cops, yeah, they had their back and forth, you know, Blair Cops, Give you that wrestler talk style. He's not really like a street dude. He ain't trying to be a thug. He's just a guy that talks a lot. He's kind of corny. And you got Adrian Broner that's still trying to be that flashy fight dude. But, you know, since he's had financial issues, it's been kind of hard to be that guy. So he lost that side. So now he's mixed with just being disrespectful and trying to play like he's a street dude. And... They have to do that to sell a fight. To be honest, the fight really wasn't that bad. Um, it wasn't that bad. It's just no one is. This this is like an exhibition to me. This is more like an exhibition fight more so than anything. You know, I know this is a ranked fight, but Blair Hobbs at one forty seven doesn't compete with the elite, and neither does Broner, and he has it for a long time. So with that being said, you know, Adrian Broner, and as far as a review, Adrian Broner just being outworked, um, getting dropped hard in the second round. He got dropped so hard that his, his teeth flew out, and he actually posted a picture of his being toothless <laughs> on IG. 
just like maybe like 10 minutes before I I, I, I turned on this video. Um, He goes to the hospital and he says that he is suffered an elbow fracture and a shoulder torn. I'm assuming that had to be from the knockdown because of the way he fell, he fell at a weird angle where his arm was behind him. So he kind of landed on his arm and he landed hard and he got up hard. So he lost his tooth. If it's true that he had all these injuries off one straight left hand from Blair Cops, Blair Cops, he went down, lost the tooth, front teeth or teeth, and also got a shoulder torn and an elbow fracture all from one punch. I'm assuming it had to be from that knockdown. Because of the way he fell. So, again, at the end of the day, this is what happens when you're not really dedicated. You know, we know A.B. on his best day would probably beat Blair Cops. But then you you did again, you, you really don't know. Because, again, you got a lot of these fights in between, like, Giovanni Santiago, where I don't really feel like he won that fight. You know, the Jesse Vargas fight was a draw, but it was officially like a legitimate draw. He got a split decision win over Adrian Granados, who you might have a, make an argument that Adrian Granados like might have won that fight too, man. There's, there's a lot of fights on his resume that's like that. You know, I mean, Paulie Malinaji, another split decision win. You know, I don't even think he beat Ponce de, de Leon back in the day. I thought he lost 6-4. Because he just doesn't let his hands go enough. And he's not much he's not really that much of a knockout artist. I mean he can punch, but he really don't throw he don't he doesn't let his hands go enough. So him being way past his prime, you know, being like what, thirty four years old. Listen, when he gets healthy and all that, he has to be dedicated. Um and it's it's crazy because I keep saying this. Especially with the fights out in Riyadh and 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 all these big paychecks that all these fighters are getting with the Turkey Alashi cards. Yo, if you're a boxer right now, that should be all your motivation because you can get on a card and make mad bread, like bread that a lot of fighters. Some of these fighters are definitely getting overpaid right now, just because right now. They're trying to make it popular to fight in Saudi Arabia. So they're sending everybody over there that fights that fighters weren't taken before. They're taking it now just because they could get paid and get on that card. Even the ones that are losing are returning. So with that being said, AB, you know, even at 34, like he can definitely bounce back as far as like getting healthy obviously coming back getting a w a, a w literally like fight someone and beat them up and you never know like you can get another paycheck on another card somewhere against a better fighter you know but it really depends on him especially if he's having financial issues which i believe do got mad kids like you got to just Yo, put la one last push in your career. Like, invest into your career and your talent one last time. Not to be no champion. <laughs> That's past. But to at least be someone that you can have, like, more fights to come. You know? Get yourself back in a conversation where right now you're just a meme right now. So... I don't know. That's the way I look at it. Broner clearly lost a fight, by the way, to me. I mean, even the judges' scorecard, I thought, were a lot more generous than what they needed to be. I mean, Broner, you know, at, at the second half, yes, he did push forward. But, you know, Cobbs did a good job boxing, you know, controlling him with a jab and just being more active. You know, I know Broner was walking him down at points, but he wasn't letting his hands go like that. And he wasn't even landing that much. You know, waste of talent. Waste of talent, you know, and I, I can't feel bad for him or support him at this point. He's disrespectful to everybody. You know, the things he do and say, I can't feel bad. He's not a victim. He acts like it. But he still has a following that will support him. 
And he still has a following that wants him to lose. So people are going to pay attention to him. They might not be paying for the pay-per-views. But at least, at the very least, people are going to tune in when he fights. You know, because on Twitter the other night, everybody was tuning in and talking about that. And then the following day, you got guys like 50 Cent. Every time he loses, everybody's posting it. So people are still tuning in, even with all the loss. So I think Broner can make it another attempt to at least get a, a couple big checks if he is to make himself, dedicate himself, you know, and not just get fit, lose the stomach. That's the same thing. We've been seeing the same thing for years now, but he's probably the most unfit he's ever been right now. And he'll grow a belly, he'll lose the stomach, get some abs, and people feel like, yo, he's back in shape. He's not in boxer shape, bro. He's not. There's a difference. Blair Cobbs is in shape. Blair Cobbs won because he's in shape. Broner's not in shape. He's not. All right? He gets in shape, some sort of shape, to get for a fight. But he's not in real shape. You know, I think the, the, the last time... That he was in like really good condition, like going into the fight, and he was obviously fast. Was when he fought Mikey at 140. I think that was the last. I know he lost the fight, but I still saw the speed in that fight in Broner. Like he moved a lot. Like he looked like he was he was sharp in that fight. Everything after that was just for a check. Manny Pacquiao was for a check. You know all those other fights. But the Mikey Garcia fight was the last time I said, okay, at least he, he made weight legitimately. And he looked quick. He didn't win, but he looked sharp. That was the last time. I haven't seen him. And that was back in 2017, bro. That was seven years ago. Damn, time flies, man. I can't believe that was 17. Anyway, um, that's my review of those three fights. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys on the next one. I got um, another wave report. Coming tomorrow, um, we got to speak on Usyk moving down to Cruiserweight. And then we got to do the uh, breakdown of Tank Davis against Frank Martin this week. Um, I'm still a little undecided on that. So I I'll let you guys know. But you guys will see the content within the next couple of days. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Smash the like button. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Peace.